Hello, everybody. It is the Boxing Source checking in here, and I have a special guest with me to uh, talk about a few things, a few topics uh, within his organization. Uh, it is the man, the leader in the World Boxing Council, the president of the World Boxing Council, Mr. Mauricio Suleiman. How are you doing? Fine, fine. I'm very, very happy. I'm doing great. It's a beautiful Friday, and I'm very thankful to be here in the Boxing Source. Gotcha, gotcha. And I know that we have uh, talked earlier, uh, particularly a few weekends ago, uh, as we were in Canastota, New York, for the International Boxing Hall of Fame weekend, where, you know, a lot of uh, boxers, promoters, uh, trainers, and whatnot were inducted into the Hall of Fame. They had three uh, classes coming in at the same time, and you were there to experience all of that. Uh, go through uh, being there for that weekend and meeting all of the people there that have been involved in boxing. Well, the Hall of Fame induction weekend is one of the most important uh, events in the whole year for boxing. It is humbling to see the great champions from the past uh, be recognized by the fans. It is a moment where everything is positive. There is no nonsense of anything. Everything is uh, smiles and hugs and recognition. And uh, just to be part of it, uh, to see uh, Floyd Mayweather, uh, Bernard Hopkins, Andre Ward, Shane Mosley, Juan Manuel Marquez, of course, Christy Martin, uh, just uh, Ludi Vela, uh, all, all the ones who were inducted. It was, a, it was called a trilogy. And uh, it was three years. Uh, the pandemic uh, made the, this not to take place in two years. So it was just a tremendous humbling uh, time to be among the so many fans that we could experience to see the great ones that uh, have made this sport great. Yes, uh, and like you said, uh, with it being a trilogy, three classes, uh, 2020, 2021, 2022, uh, you named uh, multiple uh, inductees on there like Juan Manuel Marquez, Bernard Hopkins, uh, Andre Ward, Floyd Mayweather, they had Roy Jones, James Tony, and Wolf. Layla Ali, Holly Holm. And there was uh, one that, you know, kind of stood out because um, it, there was a special gift uh, given to this person. And that was Marion Tremyar. Uh, that, you know, once she had her induction speech and she, you know, was able to, you know, give her thanks and everything like that. Uh, you had Smitty, uh, James Smith, one of the uh, lead uh, people there uh, hosting the Boxing Hall of Fame, gave her a WBC belt so that she could have a belt that says that she is a champion. I thought that was one of the uh, standing moments there in that induction ceremony from the WBC. You know, it, it's a beautiful story. She's a, a warrior, a woman who led and paved the way for women today to be and have a special place in boxing. Uh, there were times where uh, women's boxing was banned was completely discriminated, was completely uh, looked down. So all those who, who had a very courageous uh, actions for so long, for so many years, against so many adversities and obstacles uh, made it very special. Uh, at this moment, uh, there was an interview a day before and uh, she expressed to the television crew who were interviewing her that she truly regretted not having a belt because a, the championship belt is what makes a fighter understand and have something to hold on to say, I am a champion. I was a champion. I will always be a champion. When they told us that story, we immediately uh, proceeded to to provide this special gift as an honorary belt for her and for all that she had done for the sport. And it was a very humbling moment. It was very, very nice. I, I keep it in my heart. Yeah, and you know, her reaction was just, was just so great for that, you know, when she was given that belt. And you know, you were talking about that uh, TV interview. I talked with her, you know, after the induction ceremony and she said that she had a trophy for winning you know, the championship at that time, but over time she had lost it. So she didn't really have like a lasting memory that said that she was a champion. So when she received that belt, she was just overjoyed by, 
you know, receiving that actual belt. And that was just like a great gift uh, there from the World Boxing Council in reference to that, you know. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That that was special. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, you know, going into, um, you know, the dealings with the World Boxing Council as far as like, you know, different divisions here. Um, first, I wanted to talk about, you know, the top division there, the heavyweight division, of course, you know, the most talked about division uh, in the sport of boxing usually. Uh, of course, you have uh, Mr. Tyson Fury that has held the uh, WBC title after defeating Deontay Wilder uh, and has defended it recently against Dylan White. But looks like there may be a little bit of a situation there with the heavyweight title, depending on what's uh, going on with Tyson Fury. So if you have any updates on that, could you expound on that? Yes, uh, I've been talking to Tyson Fury after the fight with White which was a mandatory defense of the division. And that makes that he has no uh, commitment, no nothing to force him uh, for a few months. Uh, he has been on vacation. He has been enjoying life. And uh, he, I spoke to him this Monday. He's doing a tour of uh, social responsibility uh, events. And we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk if, if he, is uh, definitely uh, retired, then the WBC will uh, take that into consideration and make a ruling. Uh, we will support him regardless if he retires or if he continues uh, as champion. We're very proud of him. He's a real representative of uh, the heavyweight world champion. And uh, we're just giving him the time that he deserves. As I said, there is no uh, hurry at this time because he just did the mandatory defense. Gotcha. Yeah. And, you know, that was kind of like uh, something that was a topic um, in reference to him as far as like, you know, his win over Dylan White, uh, him considering, you know, going outside of boxing to have like an exhibition match and things like that. So if he did make the decision to retire, um, it seemed like the situation could have been where you would have the top, you know, contenders uh, out there that could be facing for a vacant title. And one of those, uh, people is a former world champion Deontay Wilder and um, you know he's been a long-standing champion one of the longest reigning champions of his time and he could potentially face someone like a um, I guess a Frank Sanchez or the next available uh, opponent there in the WBC heavyweight rankings like what would you think about a potential fight between Deontay Wilder and Frank Sanchez if Tyson Fury does retire? Well, I, I don't like to speculate. Uh, I always deal with facts. What I can say is that Deontay Wilder is a tremendous fighter. Five years as WBC champion. He's my dear personal friend. Uh, we went to the White House together for the Jack Johnson pardon at that time. Right. We went to Pope Francis, to the Vatican together. And uh, I respect him very much. Uh, his wife, Telly, those uh, social responsibility events, uh, we support that. We're always close. He just got a beautiful statue, uh, which is sensational, which I have to visit soon. So we will see what happens with Fury. There's mm -hmm. so much talent, so many great fights that could be made. As you said, uh, of course, uh, Wilder, Frank Sanchez, Reese, Ortiz, uh, Joyce, Parker, there's so much talent in the heavyweight division. Of course, Usyk is going to fight Joshua for the second time. So there's great excitement. We'll see what happens. And, and I'm sure we're going to be watching great fights in the coming years. Yes, most definitely. You did uh, kind of like run down the uh, top few five or six uh, fighters that were in the WBC rankings, you know, along with the current world champion Tyson Fury. So that does make a potential for a lot of good fights. Uh, there for the WBC. And you did mention a thing there about uh, Deontay Wilder's statue there in Alabama. And, uh, you know, I've yet to visit that too, but I think there's uh, a couple of people that support the boxing source that maybe don't want me to visit the statue because of other things. But that that's a whole nother story. Well, we'll, we'll go together. All right. That, yeah, that could work. That, yeah, we'll visit that could together work. the statue. <laughs> that could work. That could work. Now, um, I know that um, I think it was last weekend was supposed to be a scheduled bout for the WBC middleweight title. I think it is uh, with Jamal Charlo. I think he was scheduled to defend his belt against Masi Slecki, but due to an injury, he wasn't able to uh, make that 
uh, scheduled defense. Um, does that kind of like affect his um, standing as far as like a mandatory challenger or is it something where he could, you know, go come back in like say a couple of months or maybe six weeks and still have a defense of the middleweight title before moving towards a mandatory uh, defense? No, he, he does have uh, that time that fight was uh, contracted, scheduled. It was going to take place uh, June 18. We, we prepared a beautiful Juneteenth belt to right. commemorate. Uh, it's a freedom belt. Uh, I don't know if you have seen. We did it last year. Yes. Uh, and, and it is just a representation of, of uh, a historic event where boxing now will have every year a Juneteenth bout. Uh, he will fight. Uh, I, I, I suppose the fight with Suleki will be rescheduled. And the WBC will honor that uh, fight as 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 it was petitioned and approved. Gotcha, gotcha. There. Now, um, you also do have something in reference to. I think it's a uh, WBC uh, franchise champion Juan Francisco Estrada. Um, is there like any situation with him as far as like his uh, standing with that franchise title? Because I think it was something in reference to activity for Estrada as far as like him being the franchise champion, but being scheduled for, I guess, a fight that's uh, soon in the near future? Yes, uh, the WBC uh, supported the petition on awarding the franchise designation uh, because of the great fight that he had with uh, Chocolatito last year. Uh, when we did that, it was with the absolute understanding that he would fight Chocolatito. Unfortunately, COVID prevented the fight to take place. However, that is the fight that the world wants to see and everyone wants to see. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a tournament that we scheduled. Rungbisai against Cuadras. Uh, Rungbisai had to pull out. So Cuadras fought Rodriguez. Rodriguez beat Cuadras. Tomorrow, Rodriguez is fighting Rungbisai. So if uh, Estrada decides not to honor and he goes to fight Franco for the WBA title, then everything is uh, moot and we will rearrange the whole division accordingly. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, um, there is also something referenced to, I think it's the WBC interim title, uh, but this would be in the division, the 168 pound division super middleweight. Um, we recently had about David Benavidez versus David Lemieux with David Benavidez uh, getting a the win there and him becoming the uh, interim champion at that particular time. I know that there is a scheduled bout in September for the undisputed super middleweight titles, but it seems like David Benavidez wants to be active in that time period. So is it possible that he could have another defense of that interim title sometime here in uh, 2022? Absolutely. He is free to to defend such title. The WBC uh, granted uh, the order of an interim title when Canelo Alvarez requested to move up in weight, uh, but wanted to keep his uh, undisputed uh, status in the super middleweight. We mm -hmm. allowed him to, to do a fight and, uh, and then we would uh, assess what the situation was. He came, uh, he's coming back. He's gonna fight against uh, Triple G. September, and uh, Benavides is free to defend the interim title. That was the agreement, and he is fully aware of that. As that was live during the open meeting at the convention. Gotcha, gotcha. And I know that um, him, along with you know his uh, promoter uh, there, that was also uh, there. You know, at the International Boxing Hall of Fame weekend, Samson Lukowitz, and also you know his uh, manager, his father, uh, Jose Senior. Um, you know, they, you know, definitely want to have uh, David Benavidez as active, whether, you know, if it's, you know, defending that uh, WBC interim title or having like another situation where he could wait it out and just wait for the undisputed champion. Um, but, you know, that kind of like, you know, situates the uh, super middleweight division when it comes to the WBC title. Um, also, uh, want to jump down to welterweight. Uh, you do have the unified champion there in Errol Spence Jr. Um, you know, people are hoping that he does have an undisputed welterweight title. 
uh, fight in there. Uh, but in the interim, uh, it seems like there may be one fight scheduled uh, there that could be for the mandatory position in uh, Virgil Ortiz and David Avenja, I think it is, uh, that's going to be scheduled. Uh, is that going to be kind of like set as the about to determine the mandatory challenger for the WBC title? We had ordered uh, Ortiz against Avenesian and the winner to fight Thurman. Uh, it was a tournament which was ordered. We are determined to have the best mandatory challenger possible to avoid an undisputed champion or a unified champion having to fight uh, questionable uh, mandatory challengers. Mm -hmm. Mandatory challengers that have not uh, the level, the stature to fight uh, at, at, a, at a level of an undisputed champion. So it is a process. We were being happy with that. We're hoping to work with the WBO, with the, with the IBF in achieving uh, common mandatories. We okay. did with the WBO. Roman was a common mandatory for WBC and WBO. Right, yes. So, so it's, it's a good, uh, our, our, our wish is to have uh, unified champions, not to have the obligation to fight mandatory after mandatory after mandatory, because then uh, we are doing a, a disservice to the sport. The key is to have very good mandatory contenders. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, with that particular division, you did say that, you know, you wanted to have a tournament of sorts. Um, and you said you have, you know, Ortiz and Avengian, you know, they're number one and number two. And you said the winner to, you know, face Keith Thurman. Um, is there like any, um, um, like, further decision in reference to making it that way instead of, or where you could have you know, Ortiz versus Avangian and then Keith Thurman against somebody. It could be against, you know, Connor Ben or your Dennis Ugas or Juan Ennis. But, you know, you just had this situation there where you just said, you know, the winner of Ortiz Avangian would face Keith Thurman to set the um, WBC mandatory spot. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. That was the order that the WBC did. Uh, Thurman fought his elimination bout. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, when we ordered uh, the fight Ortiz against a Venezian, it was agreed according to Golden Boy, but uh, not according to Queensberry. Uh, and uh, Queensberry is still to provide certain documentation, certain documents. Mm -hmm. So Ortiz had to take another fight. Mm -hmm. The WBC notified all the parties that such order that we had produced now is void. We're going to Re, uh, reassess what is going to be the, the line. Everybody's hoping to see Spence against uh, Crawford. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are doing our best effort to, super, uh, to support and to mediate and to make them go and, and do that fight that everybody wants to see. I uh, gotcha, gotcha. Because uh, I did uh, kind of forget about the thing when uh, Ortiz of Ancient was initially uh, ordered, which was like at the first, pretty much the first couple of months of the year. And while Keith Thurman, you know, had his fight against Mario Barrios, they were supposed to have the thing with Virgil Ortiz against David Avenger. So that's kind of like where that situation itself out. Got you there. Got you. There. No problem. Um, now I know that um, there is an undisputed super welterweight champion in Jamel Charlo, and there is a Interim champion in Mr. Sebastian Fandora, who did have his win uh, there, uh, you know, um, when he defeated Erickson Lubin. Um, I know that there's like a little situation with the WBO of sorts, but uh, I know that Sebastian Fandora, who was, you know, very uh, visible at the International Boxing Hall of Fame there, you know, we had the, you know, we had the belt, he had the ring and everything like that. So he did represent the WBC very well uh, there over the weekend. Um, you know, like if there was like any push to try to get for uh, Fundora in a position to face Jamel Charlo, because I know that they're trying to work towards uh, Charlo facing Tim Zhu, uh, but Charlo wants to say, hey, have Fundora face Zhu and then the winner, you know, goes ahead and face him for undisputed. But you could kind of like expound on the um, situation in the super welterweight division with Jamel Charlo there and also Sebastian Fondor. 
Yes, uh, the WBC, as I, I tried to explain before, we're doing everything uh, to try to have uh, undisputed champions, to have unified champions. And uh, this provision we took uh, when, when uh, Charlo fought Castaño, they fought to a draw. It was a tremendous great fight. Mm -hmm. So when, when uh, the rematch is, is proposed, the WBC accepted and worked hard to get the rematch. So there's an undisputed champion. So in order to be fair to the ranked fighters that have been active, the WBC accepted to have an interim championship between Lubin, who was number one, and Fundora, who was number two. It was a tremendous fight. Both were down. It was yeah. a high world level fight. And we have a, a true uh, champion in Fundora as an interim champion. He understands that uh, there are uh, issues before getting the fight with Charlo, but uh, he's a young man, a uh, uh, role model, and I'm very proud of him. So we're trying to do our best to have unified champions. That, that's the reality. Yeah, gotcha. And yes, you're right about that Fandora Lubin fight. That was one of the more anticipated fights of the year, and it definitely did live up to the hype there with, with that one. Uh, there, so that that's definitely uh, you know a good move to try to, like you said. Uh, get, you know, unified champions, make the move to have unified champions and, you know, make exceptions, you know, wherever necessary so that you could have those opportunities to have unified champions. And then once that happens, then we'll see how the mandatory uh, situation, you know, forms itself out. Uh, um, kind of like close out here. I know that, you know, you have your WBC annual conventions uh, that do come up. Uh, you could uh, just go ahead and drop, um, you know, when the next convention is, and you know what you know we could kind of like see from the World Boxing Council later on down the line. Yes, uh, we were scheduled to do our convention in Kazakhstan. Unfortunately, with the ongoing invasion of Russia in Ukraine, in that area of the world, it's impossible to hold the annual convention. We have uh, uh, we're finally finalizing the details to have the convention in Houston, Texas. Uh, we're going to have the date uh, very soon and the specifics, but uh, it sure will be a sensational annual convention with great surprises. Oh, okay. So if we do have it in Houston, Texas, we'll see what the date is. And if we have the date, then I'll see if I'll be able to make it for the WBC convention uh, if it is in Houston, Texas. So that could work. That could probably work out for me there. <laughs> I mean, I could probably work out that would so, be great. That would be great, my friend. Yeah, that's great. But I want to thank you very much here, Mauricio Soliman, for taking the time to be with the Boxing Source and chatting with us. And, and we'll definitely be uh, hearing from you here uh, very soon and look forward to more uh, coming from the World Boxing Council here in the near future. Thank you so very much. I really enjoyed uh, this time with you. And anytime, I'll be very happy and honored to participate in your great Boxing Source uh podcast oh no problem not a problem thank you okay. very much god bless take care have a great weekend all right bye-bye bye-bye